Hey buddies, welcome to Barn Burner Special Edition Summer Vacation. It's here. I hope you're all having a great summer. This is going to uh, this is going to be fun. We're still going to be doing our regular shows, us three donkeys sitting around doing what we do, talking um, as if we know what we're talking about. Uh, if the flames do something big, we'll be jumping in. If we're at you know if we're at the lake and we're on the boat, we might be jumping in. If we're on, uh, at Stampede, we might be jumping in. That's the, that's the luxury about what we do. We can go from wherever, whenever, but. For the purposes of uh, the barn burner slot, your Monday to Friday type of a deal, we've scaled back the schedule a little bit. There's just not as much going on. It's also given us an opportunity to kind of change things up a little bit. Spend some time, some, some quality time, with people we wouldn't ordinarily maybe get to. Have them in studio. Maybe go to their place and sit down with them on location. We'll see how this goes. I think it's going to be great. We've got a few of these already done. And I think you're going to like them a lot. We've got the first one as we're going to roll this one out today. Now, it's a three-parter. And I know what you're thinking, three three parts. But Rhett Warner and I, we sat down with Robin Regeer. And we just kind of started bullshitting and started talking. And then one thing led to another. And I had gone through and kind of done the background on, you know who Robin Regeer is. Played for the Flames. And then the trade to Buffalo and you know, all, all that sort of thing. But he's a very interesting guy in terms of, you would think, here's a Saskatchewan guy played in the Western Hockey League, drafted into the NHL, played in the NHL. That's your traditional, that's your, that's your run of the mill Canadian hockey story, except uh, not so much. This is a guy who was not born in Canada, didn't live in Canada for a while to start his life. He was, uh, he was, you know, not quite old, but he was, you know, he was an older kid by the time he even moved to Canada and started skating and playing hockey. So it's a neat, uh, it's a neat story. Robin Regeer calls Calgary home. He and Rhett played together. They, there's kind of a, a neat relationship between those two on the ice and off the ice, obviously. But um, rather than me blow all of it here in the intro, uh, why don't we get to it? This is uh, this is a it's a great story. There's highs and lows. There's you know, reaching the top of the mountain figuratively in his career, and then there's literally nearly losing it all on a uh, Saskatchewan highway one late summer night. Let's get to it. Red Warren and I sit down with Robin Regeer. Barn Burner comes to you from the Tower Chrysler Studios. Tower Chrysler, voted Calgary Sun's Reader's Choice Award winner for Southern Alberta's favorite Dodge Chrysler dealer. We've been very lucky and proud to have had Tower as a Barn Burner partner since day number one as our studio sponsor and vehicle supplier. How great did the Nation Truck and Nation Jeep look? Tower Chrysler, 10901 McLeod Trail South, at the corner of McLeod and Southport Road. A very special edition of Barn Burner as we sit down and reminisce and shoot the shit with one of the uh, one of the good guys. 1,090 NHL games for Robin Regeer. Is that the final total when it's all said and done? Actually, I think it was 89. 89. There's, there's one tricky one in there because the, both, yeah. the, the Flames asked me to dress for one game. I think we were short players, but I was injured. Um, and they asked me to dress when I was, that was young. Yeah. And so I went out there and, and did that, but I didn't actually, I just sat on the bench and it didn't, didn't actually hit the ice. And so, uh, I didn't get credit for, for that on, on certain people. But then I found out after, I think it was for someone was supposed to get some bonus or I, I heard oh. things like that. I'm like, so I, like I was young, clueless. So I was the kind of sacrificial lamb, I guess, that was uh was put on the on yeah. the bench just to to sit there and take up a spot i know in the old days they used to count them because rob ray had a whole bunch of games where he didn't play a shift and they and then they stopped if you didn't hit the ice they weren't going to count those games anymore i don't know when that switched over but that used to be yeah. rob ray's got the most games played without a shift i think is what <laughs> maybe they owe you a day's pay or does that matter if you play uh, yeah. I, I think it used to be for the pension or something yeah, like that yeah. hey that, right. yeah. it would have been yeah. a big deal for the pension yeah so you were you were close anyway it's yeah. it's one or the other one like the other. uh d depends on on uh how you look at actually it was really funny because i think it was one of the it was like 800th game or something like that my uh christina wanted to put a put a celebration together and stuff and we were going to go to Tai on i think I it was, was after yeah but i'm like well it was the 799th game <laughs> I mean, not <laughs> not the 800th yeah, yeah. like yeah. so we're, we're celebrating 799 yeah. i guess we had a good we had a good laugh about that so life's good hey you look great everything's good kids 
you're building a house, selling a house, busy, everything's great. Uh, yeah, lots going on. Yeah, lots. There's lots happening right now in in life. With uh, yeah, the building of the the house is uh, we're almost on two years now. Uh, and it's been challenging, I Supply think. Is, chain, right? uh, <laughs> <laughs> Plum, so I, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, it's there's been substantial challenges, both with uh, supply chain and some decisions that yeah. were made and certain people that we chose and trusted that uh, didn't do a very good job and had to be fired and you know all that kind of stuff Didn't so you have the same I, story? Did. I had a nice yeah. i had a nice year and a half run with a shyster that didn't mm-hmm. get anything accomplished and all of a sudden your money's gone and he's gone and they're gone and you're looking around and the house is <laughs> lots of work to yeah. do. you're living in a little condo with three babies and you're like what the? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I had envisioned, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's great yeah. for relationships. Yeah. Um, Bonding. Yeah, I, I think uh, we're. this is the first house that uh, we're building, and I believe it'll probably be the last house that we're, we're building. It's, well, even Pinder was saying, because yeah. they did the same thing. It's at some point you just kind of hand everything over to the wife, just, just whatever you need, whatever is going to work, just, just get it through. It can this. get to the, the, to the wedding scenario though, right? Cause we all think that with the weddings, it's like, whatever you want, babe, this is, you know, this is your day. I want you to be happy. Anything. Why don't you take an interest? Why can't you? I need an opinion. I'm like, oh, I don't want to have an opinion on this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, I understood right from, uh, early uh, early stages of the of the uh, project is the the top three or four things that I find important are completely different than what Christina finds important. So if I was going to be involved that way, it would just be constant butting of the heads yeah. like, and, and that. So so I, I really haven't been involved on the day to day of of faucets that you're choosing and you know, you, you name it, paint colors and all that. Like, it really doesn't matter to me. Uh, the house is is nice. It's going to be smaller. Uh, our boys will be downstairs, which is really nice. They're Both of them are almost teenagers. One of them is, one of them will be soon. So we we need the separation. Like, oh, we, yeah. we want and need the separation. And actually, I think they oh, feel the oh, same way yeah. too. Like, they, they want to be downstairs and, and do their own thing now. So there'll be a few things with, with the house that'll be really, really nice moving forward. So the boys, one's a teen... The older one, less hockey inclined, mm-hmm. but loves the school sports. Yeah. Are you finding, because I've got a teen as well, are you finding that an adventure? Because there's a lot of uh, a lot of things going on at our house that you raise some eyebrows and questioning. Where you're told, <laughs> it's kind of like when you have a kid, people try to tell you and it's like, they can't tell you what it's like to have a kid. You have to have that kid and to understand what it means to have a kid and now it's i think it's the same thing with teenagers people have always said wait till they're a teenager wait till this wait oh it'll be you know you kind of control them at the age of 10. yeah now it's like oh just yeah it's it's an adventure uh for sure and you know things just revolve around their their friends like their friends are the most important thing to them in in the world right now and um he is playing. Uh, he's playing school sports and uh, played volleyball and really has started to really enjoy volleyball and played club volleyball. You know, hockey for him, uh, he enjoys it, but it's it's recreational. And he uh, he's been in uh, the uh, RHC uh, Rec Hockey Calgary League for the last I think three years. It's been two games a week, no practices, no hitting, yeah. really chill, and he he really well, likes it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, for them, they want SO minor hockey this this year here. That's all they care about. Like SO minor hockey is huge for those kids. Doesn't matter what age. Um, and then the young one actually for the first time, they they want SO minor hockey as well. So like I think they consider both of their their seasons a success. But um, yeah, it's really interesting to watch that how it changes. Like we as parents are not uh, cool anymore. They don't want to hang out with us anymore. And those social circles are, are their friends and, and to them. So 
doing really funny, funny things like, uh, you know, club volleyball, uh, one, one kid on the team, uh, shaved his legs and, and that like, and I'm like, why? And next thing you know, Wyatt comes down after uh, and shower and has shaved his legs. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, do you know how you you don't know how itchy, you don't know how itchy that's going to be like, so stupid. Boys there's so a lot stupid. of dumb and i was gonna say because I, I i've got two boys one's 18 and one's 15 and it's you're in that where they st- they start to really stink and it feels like they're getting dumber <laughs> like they're going the other way with some of the decisions they make and the things that they do is like are you what are have we totally failed as parents have we hey, totally just taken the hands off the wheel you because you guys are idiots right hey, now yeah i think they're just trying to find their way really and, and they're they're not gonna as soon as you say something, they won't listen to you. So how do you find a way to kind of get your point across that they do stink now, bad, uh, they're they're active and they're sweating and BO and all that kind of stuff, but like do us all a favor and, and head to the shower, but you can't tell them that because as soon as you tell them that, they won't do it. Yeah, then yeah. it's a- Yeah, and, and that. So that's what we've we found is how, how do you work around that? <laughs> yeah. and. And, and so, um, you know, trying to ask their friends nicely to maybe influence them or, or yeah, or something that way, or, you know, Christina can talk, well, you know, as, as a, as a, as a woman or, you know, the girls, they want to hang around boys that actually smell yeah, Yeah. half decent and, and that, but, oh, it's hilarious. Like every day is an adventure. Like our young one now is into cologne. Like, and the first time he walked downstairs, oh my like it was pungent like yeah. like i could smell them from across the room and uh it's like okay i i get it you're into but less is more when it comes to to this stuff i like i could hardly we could hardly even sit in a in a vehicle with them so you know they're learning they're yeah. they're trying to learn all that and navigate through that biggest concern for kids i mean we boom's got two boys i got three you got a couple like i'm guessing boys and girls are also different and in in as a parent what you'd be concerned with what they're getting into for you are, are there concerns out there that you're worried about is it the phones is it the social media is there things that you're like geez how do you how do you steer them yeah, I, I I wouldn't view it as as kind of steering them. Um, you know, they I think you have to be aware of of that. You have to limit uh, phone usage, especially at night. Yeah. Uh, you have to limit that, and they they need to understand why. Um, but uh, they have to. You have to be aware of what's going on, but they have to figure it out too. You hope too, that yeah. you hope that their failures are and, and mistakes are ones that that they can learn from and they're not catastrophic i think is is probably the, the best way i would i would say because i i made mistakes too and and that and you know you, you look back on it though you're like Ooh, we got lucky on that one or you know but I, but you learn from you just you just want to um guide them but you don't want to like be there all the time for because they gotta they have to figure it out too. So you know you hope you have uh, friends around them that that That's are that are that are me. kind of decent yes. decent too. That they're not they're not just little troublemakers all all the time, and they and they can slowly figure it out that way. But uh, but boys are like you know there's some certain things. I I try to keep we try to keep our you have to keep them going. I've talked to my uh, my brother and, and sister about this. We've got boys everywhere on, in the family, 10 of them. And as soon as you keep them active, doing things with them, uh, you have to discipline them less. Yeah. Because like, as, as, as bad as the, like they're kind of like high energy dogs in a, in a way that, yeah, mm-hmm. you have to get them outside. Exhausted. You have to yeah, get them run running. Up. You have to, you have to <laughs> do things. You have to do activities yeah. with them. And when you do that, uh, they just seem to be a little bit, a little bit better, a little more receptive and not, not kind of looking to cause as much trouble. Yeah. I find that it's, it's pivoted. Cause I would, for a while you're like, I remember when I, when I was that age, when I was that age and you put yourself in the kids spot, I'm now on the other side with my, like, especially with the older guy. I'm like, so this is what, when I looked at my dad 
Oh, yeah. When I was in grade see. 12 and I thought of him this way, like I'm that guy now, right? I, it's, it's all starting to kind of change where I, I, I've taken myself out of the kid's spot. It's like, so this is what my old man was thinking when I was <laughs> running around and being a clown in grade 12 or whatever we were doing. Oh, yeah. Like it, it is actually really hilarious. You know, they rip, they used to rip the tape, uh, tape out of the tape deck, right? Like this is awful music that you, yeah. you know, the kids are listening to now and now like the kids come in and they pick a oh. radio station and sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's like, Oh, okay guys, I can't, yeah, we can't I can't, this. I can't deal with this. Like, you know, that way. And yeah, you know, there's some pretty funny stuff out there. Like, you know, we used to drive back from the, from the blades games. Like we were, we were in roster in there and we'd, load up the van and uh, it, it had the third row seat and we just wanted to see some fights and, and a good game and and that and on the way home from Saskatoon to Rostron we would sit back there and we would just fight and wrestle. oh wrestle and fight and dad you know he's he's swatting blindly into the back wow. back seat hoping to connect with with somebody and then you know when he can't do that because we're way back there um, don't make me pull this van over and then we had to walk about a kilometer down the down the road to get that energy out but we were just all hyped up with, with the game so it's kind of funny you remember some of that and then now like just kind of what we're going through with all these these boys but uh what? yeah village honda is a proud supporter of barn burner you can find them in the northwest auto mall or check them out online at villagehonda.com village honda's got new hondas arriving daily drive away in your new honda from village honda your dealership for life in the northwest auto mall and at villagehonda.com the hearing loss clinic has been helping change people's lives for the better since 1993 at the Hearing Loss Clinic, it's never been about hearing impairment. It's been about empowering you to be socially active, more connected with those around you, and confident in every aspect of your life. People of any age can suffer from hearing loss, and studies have shown that serious health risks have been linked to untreated hearing loss. They have nine locations to serve you, four in the city of Calgary. Make a healthy choice and book an evaluation today at hearingloss.ca. Best memory, I'm putting you on the spot, but you talk about your parents in Rostern, and I know that you, Brazil, and all the stories will maybe dig into that, but best thing you did with your parents, and best thing you think you've done with your kids so far. And if you can't think of one Ooh. offhand with your parents, saying, like that's fine, but I'm just curious if there's stuff that jumps out to you. Uh, well, I think as a now as a parent, uh, I realized this probably when it was took me to about 30 years old was the commitment that my mom and dad made to not just myself, uh, but all of, all of our kids, like there's, there's four kids in the, in the family. And, you know, whether it was watching, uh, my older brother Dean use volleyball games and hockey or, or getting me to, to hockey and soccer that I played as a kid and, and ball Richie as well with all the sports and, and my sister, like they were just, they were fantastic, really committed. Um, and you know, working bingos when, when needed to, when started getting into AAA hockey and having to pay big money for it that we didn't have at the time and fundraising and, but that level of commitment and that was with everything like, um, highlights were, you know, two weeks of, uh, of our summer vacation was at, uh, Baker's cabins and yeah, Wa Wasque Sioux yeah. play. Yeah play in the uh, junior lobstick there for a week and go fishing and water skiing, like just fantastic time. And so those are the things that I really, really enjoyed and, and didn't fully understand how much uh, mom and dad had, had put into that till, till after. Um, so I guess kind of take that to heart and try to be committed to, to our kids and what, what they want to do and try to get them outside or, or do activities and, you know, they wanted to play badminton. So they were playing badminton for a couple of years and doing that. And we talked about other sports and activities and just get them, get them doing things and, and do things as many th activities and stuff with them as, as possible, because soon probably won't be able to, or you won't be able to keep up mm -hmm. or, you know, the, the, the skiing downhill skiing, like soon they'll be just See gone. Ya. And so that would be probably the biggest thing that I, I kind of took from growing up in, uh, in a family with multiple yeah. kids is that level of commitment that, uh, that my parents, Ron and Edith, uh, made to all, not just me, but all of us. And, and that actually leads into, you know, at the, in the career, one of the most special things, um, with, uh, 
being part of the Stanley Cup winning team was being able to share that with them, it's like with with back, with well. them exactly. That was a way that uh, you know you can say thank you and that, but to just hey, you made that kind of commit commitment, uh, all of that time, finances, all that volunteer work, and, and that uh, this is a way to share this experience and have you uh, part of it and and you know, say thank you that way. And to me personally, that was probably the, the most special thing about the uh, being part of that is, is that kind of interaction with, and not just with them, with the, the, the team or the group of people that kind of helped you along the way, whether it was minor hockey coaches, teachers, or uh, certain parents or whatever it was, Hey, all come around be be a part of it and thank you for for helping be part of the journey your parents were that not just to the kids that that that's what your parents were like right it was just giving caring parents just i, I do want to talk about about you because it's so brazil hey i you know i know you get asked a million times so you're brazilian well okay so but your, your parents you know you moved a little bit to indonesia and then you come to canada and mm -hmm. all of that i guess just kind of your parents journey that got you to saskatchewan of all places yeah well they they got married at a young age which lots of people did back then um you know we're both very religious and still are uh didn't have a lot of money and wanted to travel and the way to do that was to be involved with uh, service work, yeah. uh, missionaries. So, so off, uh, off they went to Brazil was the first stop for, for them. And, uh, you know, they're, they're newlyweds doing what newlyweds do. And my older brother showed up in uh, Brazil and so did I, uh, you know, kind of, uh, three, three years, uh, three and a half years after that. Yeah. So, um, um, you know, for them, they, they, they've always enjoyed, I think, adventure. Uh, they've enjoyed travel. Uh, my mom was an R RN registered nurse and dad was involved with agriculture. So, you know, that fit really well into uh, what MCC, Mennonite Central Committee, was trying to do is they were trying to um, get people to be more self-sustaining out in the rural areas. Uh, so that's where my dad came in with the agriculture background. Uh, they were also trying to increase... Um, the level of awareness healthcare wise, uh, just basic things that we we know and, 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 and knew, uh, those people didn't. And so that's where my mom came in. And then they weaved in also the uh, religious part of it um, with being missionaries. So it was a really cool experience for them. It was really cool for us too. Like I don't remember any parts of Brazil because I was too young, yeah. but we came back and uh, uh, we were in Rostern, just living outside of Rostern for just under a year. And then we went to Indonesia for, for four, about four and a half years. And I do remember uh, a good portion of that. And that's where Richie was born, in Bandung, Indonesia. So there was two of us uh, born in Brazil. Richie was born in Indonesia. And actually, my sister, Marley, is the only one born in Canada, yeah. born in Rostern. And at, at a certain point, she was kind of rattled about that you know you guys are born in all these fun exotic, <laughs> exotic. places yeah, yeah, yeah. right and i'm born in but yeah. we're, we're like it doesn't matter like it really doesn't matter and uh we're all we're all canadians even though i've there's been some funny stories you know people coming up to me in la uh and and starting to speak portuguese to me and i was like you know i i was nine months old when left brazil like yeah. I, I don't know any portuguese I, I know a little bit of indonesian but uh, yeah, the, the Portuguese, no, right, right over my head. Ever thought about going back just as a... Yeah, like, so there were some uh, opportunities actually back in 2004 after that run we were on here in Calgary. The, um, some people reached out uh, from, I think it was like Brazilian Ice Hockey Federation or something very official sounding oh. that way, you know, do you want to come back and do some coaching or this or that? And I was like, well, I can't, I don't really want to right now or heading into the off season, want to get ready, relax and get ready for the next season. Um, and then actually Christina, I talked about it when, uh, when we were in LA, cause it's a little bit closer yeah. once you're in LA, but then, you know, by then we had kids and stuff like that. So it gets a, to be a little bit more challenging to, to travel. So there's been a few times where I've, I've thought about it, but never, never have. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if will or not like a, 
you know, we talked about kind of all the things that we have going on in life right now. And it gets, it kind of comes at like, it's coming at us pretty quick right now with, with everything. And I think, um, once our kids get a little bit older, they start driving and things like that. That's talking to yeah, older, so. yeah, uh, friends of ours that are older. Uh, they said once once that happens, it's a pretty big step change in the family and and kind of your need to to be around and stuff like that. So that that might free up some some time. We were talking before we started recording about your kids, Buffalo, Calgary. What do they miss? What do they like? For you. From what, th- age three to seven, you're in Indonesia, and then you come to Canada, which I'm guessing is quite a culture shock. Do you remember what you missed about Indonesia, what you were thankful for in Canada, just that that separation? Yeah, well, we we were just outside running around, like as as young kids in, in Indonesia, um, we had exotic pets. Um, we had a monkey named Barney, a little jungle cat, Mickey, uh, you know, things like that. Like people would come, come out of the jungle, like every week, it seemed like with all kinds of exotic animals and, you know, here you want to pet this, uh, snake or this, like it was just, it was just very, very different. Um, there's some weird things that, come out of the bush in Saskatchewan. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Bit Northern, bit yeah, Northern whatever. Saskatchewan. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's just a very different different environment, different culture. Um, it's a, it's a huge change. Like as a kid, you like, I grew up there first sleeping under mosquito net, taking malaria pills. Like, and that was like, I thought that normal. Uh, and then you get to Saskatchewan and oh, they're like, we don't have to do that. Uh, Um, or, um, or just, uh, kind of the, the winters, like, you know, you're not used to that you, you don't know any better being in indonesia and then you get here you're like oh okay well there's seasons there's yeah and and very drastic changes to them and and it's probably one of the things that actually helped me get involved with hockey so much is like well what am i going to do now like you it's running wind- around outside in rostern and no. yeah yeah like uh, you know i'm not going to curl like i'm not going to take up curling uh so like what are my friends doing well they're they're playing hockey like that's what kids do and in small towns and in the winter. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was a big, big change, but one that I, I actually really enjoyed, like, uh, um, d- didn't fully realize it till long. You're kind of, there's the theme there, right? Like you kind of grow up and get a little bit older and you're like, man, I had a really cool childhood. So you come back from Indonesia, you're seven or. Yep. Yep. Six and, and a half, and seven. Yeah. Start playing hockey. Yeah. How old were you when you started playing? Yeah. It was six, six yeah. and a half, seven. Yeah play in roster to yeah. right play on the yeah. t- roster and red wings <laughs> yeah uh, midget triple a prince albert pa yeah driving yeah. back and forth to so, pa yeah so just a quick um started playing in roster um loved it uh got a chance to play up with uh with a few teams but uh you know there was no double a triple a programs in small town saskatchewan you then had to go yeah. elsewhere so um again back to the commitment piece you know mom and dad came to not just me but other members of her family two other kids and you know if you really want to do that it, we will support you and luckily there was a few other kids from around roster and so they could they could Carpool. actually take turns with carpooling and stuff so played in warman uh for a couple of years uh they played in the center four league had double a so played there and then played in Prince Albert, midget triple A, which I don't even the Mintos. know. The Mintos. Yeah, the Mintos. Uh, but I played as an underage. I played as a, as a second year Bantam yeah. at that time. Um, Were you a big kid then? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. I was full grown in grade nine. Uh, I haven't, uh, yeah. haven't got any taller since, since then. But uh, lucky again that, uh, you know, I was 15 years old and wanted to play triple A midget. And there were two teams in Saskatchewan contacts in the blazers that that uh, wanted me and there was prince albert uh the two teams in saskatoon you had to move there and you had to be billeted oh. and at 15 i just wasn't ready to leave home yet uh and prince albert let me still live at home and the best part of it was jay banich uh 16 year old from duck lake uh, he also made the the prince albert team and he had this beautiful uh firebird <laughs> the the Trans Am Firebird yeah. with the big phoenix on the on the hood, the T tops, sixteen years old, just got his license, and 
we are ripping up and down the highway, the highway. Oh. all winter long. Single like, oh. They, oh yeah, not like you probably parents would get arrested for letting kids do that probably now, <laughs> right? And, and it's just like, all right, see, see you later. And and we made it. We did. He did not put that thing in the ditch once. And it was some, uh, there was some nasty weather. Oh. But but yeah, it just you look back on that kind of oh so so much fun like what. Uh, we had and then off to off to camp loops call peter klein at mcleod law at 403-254-3864 or go online at mcleod-law.com you can also find them on social media at mcleod law llp you know peter klein at mcleod law personal injury guy but also he's the go-to guy in the city for your disability insurance claims if your long-term disability insurance company is refusing to pay insurance benefits to you Contact Peter. He's going to help you out. He'll get you the disability benefits you paid for and you deserve. He'll get you your peace of mind back, the peace of mind you paid for. It's time to discover or rediscover the legendary St. Eugene Golf Resort and Casino. Planning a golf trip, a romantic getaway, or maybe just some tranquility away from the city. St. Eugene is the answer. Hotel, championship golf course, casino, spa, restaurants, all of it nestled in the spectacular Rocky Mountains and just minutes outside of Cranbrook, BC. Visit their website, steugene.ca, and experience the history and heritage of the St. Eugene Golf Resort and Casino. Advice, because I've got a 14-year-old, so you've got that age kind of... In the hockey world, and maybe it's even more in the States than it is here, but there's a lot of people that are considering sending their kids to an academy type school, this or that advice where they have to be billeted because I've seen the best of you would be the same way in junior hockey. You see the best and the worst of it. If you get a good billet, their family, yeah, their, their mom and dad that you, that's a relationship that lasts a lifetime. Almost mm -hmm. you get a bad billet. You're effing lost. Yep. And shit goes sideways fast. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe not the end of the world, but there's a lot of guys that had bad billets that and it affects their whole life pattern and career. Yeah. So, yeah. So I can I can talk about me personally, first of all, and then maybe give yeah. an opinion after that. But personally, I wasn't ready to leave uh home at, at 15 and and made the correct choice for uh and it was a it was a family choice, but also one that you know mom and dad were taking input from from me too um fast forward the next year 16 year old year uh, i had been drafted to kamloops and stuff so go out there 16 year old year was the most difficult year i've ever had in in hockey bar none like it i was lonely uh you're out in a in a new city uh great great billets like really lucky daryl luckily and, you had yes very lucky daryl and penny adams were awesome and uh and that so but new city new family really um new team new school like new everything and uh i didn't have a vehicle so you're relying on uh right. on people to 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 kind of pick you up and get you around it was the most difficult year i have ever had uh had a calling card uh had a calling card yeah, back yeah, in the day yeah, from yeah. mom and dad and you know phoning home all the time talking to them talking to brother sister friends Whoever. like just missing missing them it was a it was a tough yep. tough tough year so for me personally um i'm really glad i didn't move away at 15 and it was a challenge at at 16, 16. and and like you say um you know i got lucky with with having a few fortunate people in in my life that made it a little bit easier uh, and then 17, I had a vehicle and kind of a little bit of maturity and things like that too. But I, I would have, a, in my opinion, I'd have a very hard time letting one of our, our boys move away and, and go out on their own, um, before 16 years old. I, I just feel like the boys in general have, they mature a little bit slower than, than girls do. And it's a, it'd be a tough, tough decision to make. I'm not saying, uh, you know, some of them aren't ready for it. Maybe there yeah, are, but it, but it would be to me that risk reward, the, the risk is, is a lot higher at that point than the reward. They can potentially stay at home 
and play with a good team, whether it's hockey, volleyball, you name it, they would still play for a good team anywhere around here in our environment. And I'm of the opinion, if they're a good enough player and person, they will find their way regardless of if you pay extra money for them to go to Wilcox, Saskatchewan and live in the middle of nowhere for for a season of hockey and, and school I spent like a week in wilcox one summer and that my decision was made as far as wilcox <laughs> yeah 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 and, and uh and sometimes i think the 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 marketing of an academy or the marketing of uh of yeah. something is does not always uh the execution of it and the results of it are, are not always there there's some programs that are fantastic there are and uh you know if if the parent and and kid probably the biggest thing is if if the kid really wants to if that child really wants to go um that's a that's a t- like and if they make that commitment i think they feel by going um uh, and they make that commitment i think as parents you, you have to support that within reason but, but if it's the if it's the parent parent needs to know if the kid is actually, or if you're just paying for them to be there, isn't the answer. It is you not. better it, it, damn exactly. well know what yeah. your kid is made of. And is this something that yeah. he's desperate to go do and to prove? 100%. It shouldn't be the, the parent leading the, the charge saying, well, I can get you can... into this school. And the kid's like, oh, okay, I guess so. Yeah, like, I want to do that. Well, yeah. okay. It, we always find it in our house to double check on things say they want something oh, oh, oh this is bright and shiny and you, you really want that eh yeah offer them something else and if they want that the same <laughs> yeah clearly yeah. it's yeah. not a single focus thing <laughs> it's just the shiny object right like yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's not a true desire for them it's okay well you want this video game yeah this is the only thing i wrote. what about this new phone oh well, yeah wait now that's pretty good too. The phone yeah. is good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? I like stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and it's back to what we were talking about before too, like with with phones and social media. Um it's 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 right there in front of you all the time. So they're they're, the they're seeing it all the time. So yeah, it's a it's a huge challenge. I think that's the biggest thing for us is and I might be a grumpy old bastard, but those phones and 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 screens are ooh, scary yeah. stuff to us cuz you 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 feel like you might know what they're doing on there, but then you always hear the horror story of, mm-hmm. of things that. Yeah. Well, I, I just liken it to, to show and tell 24 seven. Like it used to be once a week in, in class, Monday morning, right? It, everyone had their, their few minutes to get up in front of the class and yeah. you know, this is what we did uh, in the weekend or, or this is what's going on or we got a new pet or whatever. And it was just a very short little focused thing. And then away you went and did your work, but now it's, it's 24 or seven show, show and tell. Yeah. And, and that to, trying to show off. And yeah. Tell how yeah, great exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Kamloops, you were 95, uh, 96. 96 I, I came draft. in right after, uh, I forget what I was drafted, but I, when I, my first year in Kamloops was 96. After that run, the just a legendary run, they had yeah, three yeah. Memorial Cups in four Tucker, years, I think it Don was. Kelly, yeah, yeah, again, La, that whole, Steve I think Nieder, Niedermeyer had been through there, yeah, Daryl Sador, Sador, like they just had a really, really yeah. good, uh, which in junior was was pretty amazing because there's so much turnover. You, you lose players after two to three years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we came in, the, the team was struggling and, uh, or I came in, we had four, four 16 year old, uh, four 16 year olds. And I think, yeah, we had the first losing season in, I don't know if anyone could remember yeah. that for, and it was tough. And Don but, Hay was gone then, right? Yeah. Don Hay was gone. Uh, Ed Dempsey was the coach there my first year and then they let him go. And then, uh, Mark Habscheid actually Had came been. in. So, um. I really enjoyed Mark. He was pro- one of my best coaches, I think, uh, in, and leading up to, to pro because really Mark had, had played NHL and he wasn't there to step on anyone's, uh, on anyone's back, shoulders, anything like that, to move on. He was there actually to develop us as players. I remember specifically uh, talking to him and he's like, "What? okay, Robin, what do you think you need to do 
to play pro hockey and let's let's work on that and so having that conversation and if i was off base he'd be like well this is the things that you need to work on and i remember uh we did this drill where uh they had the forwards in uh on the hash marks uh in in one zone and they got to come around the net and skate full tilt around the net and uh the defenseman was over at the other face off dot so they could come around full speed and as they came around that last post to come up the ice we could then start skating backwards so Ooh. it was completely unfair like <laughs> they were they were they were full speed Why? and and you're at a stop and and man was i mad like because i got beat like yeah. all the time oh i was so mad and uh and that oh and and i I've started complaining to Habscheid, right? Oh, this is, this is terrible. How this is unfair. Like, yeah. And he looked at me, he's like, maybe you're just not enough, a, a good enough backwards skater. And I, oh, like yeah. that got under like my skin so bad that that's, I just worked on that, worked on. And so I thought I, you were going to tell me you just started going at him. No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And, um, but he just knew how to press, press our buttons and my buttons, I guess. And, uh, and yeah, so I, I started working on it hard, and uh, yeah, next thing you know, they're not All like you're they're not beating you anymore. And then next thing you know, we're moving up, and they're not beating us anymore. Like it was just a really good way to to challenge. Uh, us as as players you go and from pound. not being able to achieve it at all to all of a sudden going i got this yeah where, where nowadays i think uh you do that and then there'd be like five hr reports filed and uh parents would be <laughs> we had pa parents would be all over the coach oh you can't do that we had a <laughs> we had a practice late in the year in buffalo this year and i was running it and i was i was deliberately because we didn't really have much left and I said, we're gonna do an old school practice so all the old <laughs> dumb drills that we used to do the kids were livid they were like this is the worst i'm not this is so stupid i'm not doing it dumb. Uh, well, well <laughs> and it's true because a lot of the drills were idiotic well i i remember like i remember when we got mike keenan here as a coach the the worst nhl coach i've ever ever seen or been a part of uh the guys all knew like that had him in florida they're like these are the drills we're going to do and these are the days we're going to do them and this is what's going on everything was like he he had just the same stuff all the time and really no clue what what was what was going on like and here here he was in in the nhl coaching in the right? nhl because yeah. I, I remember watching yeah. those practices like what are we watching here yeah Oh, yeah. You wouldn't do that with and, you wouldn't do it with your kids' team. No. no. I remember the Jim Vandermeer. He had the stick oh, sliding along the ice in a fan. Standing and he had to like jump like Hop he was over. jumping rope, hopping over the stick. <laughs> it, it was as though they, he was being punked. Like, is somebody recording yeah. this for a reality TV show? Yeah. No, that's yeah. It's Iron Mike, one of the most any... respected NHL coaches ever. Mm -hmm. Now you guys didn't overlap Western League then, right? You would have no, just I left. Was gone. Yeah. I was his idol, probably. Growing probably, up. yeah, you'd have known. Yeah, we we would go into Saskatoon and watch. Uh, Who would you guys have there? Frank Bannum, yeah, Norm Miracle, uh, in net. Uh, you had Belak, I think, uh, yeah. was there. Um, Big Chris McAllister. Um, McAllister. Um, who's that really annoying but skilled forward to? Because uh, Bannum. DL, yes. Bannon was the shooter and Mark DL. Hey, you knew you knew it right away. Just was in sticking, them. sticking people all the time and oh, just yeah. like, oh, oh yeah, it was so people. funny to um but yeah, uh I don't know if Alan, Chad, Chad Allen. Was there we were Chad there. Allen was there. Um, you know, really a really good solid blades team. We actually. had good teams, except yeah. we had to go play in F and well, Cam yeah. loops and get yeah. S pumped by yeah. them and so yeah, uh, grew up kind of cheering, cheering for them. And then yeah, off to, off to Kamloops. Outdoor Dental is dentistry with no needles, no drills, and no stress. Their Salaya laser treatment is an excellent solution for people who experience dental phobia. In one to two minutes, you'll be relaxed, comfortable, pain-free, and back onto your day in minutes. Also, Outdoor Dental does snoring treatments. Two 15-minute sessions can increase the tension in the soft palate in the back of your throat, which reduces snoring. It's non-surgical and pain-free. Again, just two 15-minute treatments. Outdoor Dental does snoring treatments as well. Two 15-minute sessions can increase the tension of the soft palate, which reduces snoring. It's non-surgical 
and pain-free. Also at Outdoor Dental, dental implant treatment can be scary for many, confusing, expensive. They use cutting-edge dental technology to ensure you're happy, healthy, and you'll feel confident in your results. Check them out online. It's Dr. Jay Patel at Outdoor.Dental. The word is out. Madrose Pub in Royal Oak has become one of Calgary's best pubs, and it's no secret why. 20 beers on tap, kid-friendly Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, daily specials, lunch specials, some of the best food you're going to find in the city, period. Burgers, pastas, steaks, full entrees, and proud to serve one of the best and most talked about pizzas in Calgary. Summer's here. Come enjoy the brand new patio. Check out their website. Maybe order some takeout. Madrose.pub is the website. 15 Royal Vista Place is the address. It's Madrose Pub. And then the draft. I was between the Western League draft because it just happened. And you were kind of saying, kids, if you don't get drafted. Oh, it's so it's funny for different... the kids. I want to jump in on there yeah. because the kids or families listen to this. We talk about kids' sports and, you know, the WHL draft just happened recently. And, and, my year was the first year of that draft. So I always go back and, and you can go through the list and how few of those guys actually went on or well, played or even in the WHL, yeah. let alone oh, yeah. past yeah. that, right? Because we all, all these families out there, you're hanging your hat on this draft and mm -hmm. oh my, we're a third round or not drafted or that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So my opinion on, on it is, is I'll, I'll just talk a little more in depth on that. A generational type talent, like you can't miss, it's different, right? Yeah, right. For them, 100%. you know, there's, there's people watching them flow and they're just that, that good. Um, they'll, they'll work their way up and away they go. But my opinion of, for most of us, um, is that actually there needs to be, uh, some adversity yes. because you actually have to figure out what's going on. And we just talked about that in that previous drill, right? Like there's adversity there. Like I'm getting beat all the time in that other defensemen are as well. How do we figure this out? Mm -hmm. So to not just give it to you on a silver platter and, and here you go, but for kids to have a little bit, bit of adversity, um, I, I don't think is a bad thing. And wow. so, um, it forces them to figure it out. How, how can I do this better? What do I need to work on? And those challenges, you then figure out who can, who can do that, which they're, they're going to need to do as they continue on. And, and if they want to play higher level of hockey, they're going to have to figure out what, what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What are these other players trying to do to me to be successful? And what do I need to do to figure out how to stop that or how like, and all that is very, very important. And like, I saw a player like Chad Hintz, for example, who he grew up in Laird, uh, was a every, all, any parent that saw him as, as a kid would be like, that guy's going to make the NHL. Can't miss. Yeah, yeah. And he, he lit it up all through minor hockey, had a decent, uh, triple image at career played in moose jaw uh for the warriors and went over to europe and played like division two or three or something like that for a bit and done like no and there were so many parents back to what you said that would say that guy is is going for sure so you have to be very careful with it and if the kid takes hold of it if the kid figures out with some adversity if if the kid is is uh disciplined work ethic you know all that kind of stuff the, th they are going to have a way better shot at it and in general than than others who are just like well my, my dad says first thing new. they've eliminated society and life has eliminated so much of the obstacles that kids used to have to overcome we've the adversity aspect for for boys out there is a fraction of what it used to be and as a stupid story i brought this up a few weeks ago i was with razor in a, a rink in buffalo and a bunch of boys walk by and because it's razor i was like you think any of those kids have ever been in a in a tussle in, in a schoolyard yeah. like you know what i mean nothing yeah. not not that you need to be getting in fights and stuff but there's no damn way they have and just so the adversity any of the challenges a lot of that stuff's been wiped off the table. So for kids to have that, little boys to have to overcome that, I think the studies just show over and over how important it is mm -hmm. for them to have to do that. Secondly, and small town Sasker, small town guys, 
I think that we believe have this belief anyway. But the importance for a child to want to do it and to yes. prove to you that he truly wants to dropping him off at a trainer is not him wanting to do no. it. Him biking to <laughs> down the hill and doing ten hill yeah. sprints on his own. Yeah, that's him wanting to do I, it. That I, him him going outside and shooting a hundred pucks without you telling him to mm -hmm. that's him wanting to do it yeah providing them you, you support them and you provide you take care of them but there's a difference between giving them something and them actually wanting it my kids would go work out with a trainer if i drop them off at the trainer and say this mm -hmm. is what you're supposed to do go and do it on their own is when you know they want it yeah and it's if they want because sometimes even as a parent, though, you have to give them that push that yeah. there needs to be some motivation. Because I know with, with one of my, like, if you just let him, he'll just, whew. but if you, no, listen, you, you have to go. And then once he gets his motor running, he'll go. So it's, it's hard. I'm not saying that yeah. you, you throw them out there and never give them guidance. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that you can't dictate all the things that they're doing. Here, you've been to a trainer now. He's given you a program. Are you doing it? Yeah. You can and you can question them, yeah. and you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's it's the same. If you're if, if part of their role in your household is to put the dishes away, and they don't do it, well, you have to hey, put the dishes away. But yes. they have to want it because I think what's happened is there's a bunch of guys that have actually could have made it, or even if they have made it, you can see it now. The guys that really want it, they perform when shit hits the fan mm -hmm. or when it's needed, right? Yeah. And we've taken so much of that away from kids, they've never learned how to do it. Yeah, I, I and, it, and it's very, it's actually very fulfilling as a parent uh, when that happens. Like for example, uh, you know, we talked about uh, Wyatt, the oldest playing club volleyball for the first time uh, this, this season. And uh, you know, he's playing middle and he's tall, kind of lanky, but, uh, um, you know, doesn't have a great vertical and there's some other kids a little more athletic and a little more in, in tune with their body and, and they've got great verticals. And so he's like, well, I, I want to work on my vertical. I want to, I was like, okay, well, let's look at some, some of the, uh, some of the stuff you can do and, uh, let's go do it. And so we were in the, in the gym and, and doing that. And then a couple of times he's like, dad, let, let's go work out. I want to go, I want to go work on my vertical and like as a parent like i loved yeah to to hear that like i'm like yeah okay i'll i'll go with you 100 percent right now and i'll do it and like it's a really a proud like it's a proud feeling as a as a as a parent when when your child comes so your to you and to get yeah to and yeah. yeah i i think it's fantastic so when you both look back now what kind of a kid were you i I believe in the people I've talked to, you were very driven. You were a self-motivated, you were an intense guy. Is that fair? Even as a kid? Yeah. So for me personally, um, I loved sports. Uh, our family, the rear family is competitive, like really competitive. And I didn't realize that till after and other people have pointed it out because you're just always you're in, in it. it. Yeah. Um, but we are, we were always doing competitive things, whether it was a beach volleyball game, uh, or golf or, or cards, like my grandma and grandpa were gear, never let us win. They're like, these kids need to earn it like that way. And, and you know, they're like, oh, that's as a kid, you're like, well, that's mean. But then after I was like, man, that was, that was fantastic. Like, I'm, I'm glad they like that. But, uh, so I tried to be very committed. And so I'd go out for runs, like, um, and work out as a as a kid i'd run out in the out in the uh out on the grid roads and things like that there um yeah i i just i worked like for me i was never uh i would say there was only a couple teams where i was actually the best player um i was usually in the call it the top five maybe uh, for most teams but very rarely that number one player but it just it's it's work commitment dedication you just keep at it and Compete. and some of those some of those kids those those talented kids or they just didn't have the dedication it took or they made some poor decisions or you know some of them their family couldn't afford to continue to put them in some very expensive uh sports like hockey got very expensive like there was all kinds of different factors there but uh for me i just kept 
kept working. And that was something that I could control and kind of took, uh, took a hold of. Well, so that's sorry. kind of the, the person that I, I felt I was, and I, I tried to continue to do that kind yeah. of throughout the career work, like work at it. Yeah. And for you, were you kind of that kid or did you need that push? We didn't, it was a different era. Yeah. Right. Like you, I went to an NHL, I'd made the NHL, had played, and I went to training camp without skating. Now, <laughs> that's completely <laughs> idiotic. But, I mean, you, even when I got drafted, the, the Panthers called, do you want to come down and train in Florida? No. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you don't say no to that stuff, right? Like, and I did, but it was... I like of, Saskatoon in the summer. It, <laughs> it was out of pure... <laughs> Stupid! I don't know what's naive. The, naive? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm good. Thanks. I'll be all right. No, but I, I think that today's world is it's it's so different yeah. than uh, I I say it to lots of parents. I said the nice thing now for our kids are getting to an age where the discipline when I was growing up and now for kids getting to my kids' age is that the coaches become the disciplinarians in a way, right? The, like. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times the coach lays out the ground rules for, no, curfew is this, no phones, this, yeah. that. They're the bad cop. Yeah, so I was, you just kind of followed what, well, here's the rules and here's the th stuff. But I, I think I was, pro to be realistic about it, I was better disciplined and did more than everyone else, mm -hmm. but I wasn't over yeah. the top well, either. What what I would say this too, to just uh, a little more detail of what we just talked about, both you and I, um, I also thought I was, I was working hard mm -hmm. until I went to my first uh, Blazers camp, WHL camp. And we had um, Daryl Sador and, and some of these NA, bona fide NHL players there and then the veterans and stuff. And I was like, oh man. Like I thought I was working hard, but they were working harder and they were in better shape. So like that was a huge change and a huge realization of that. And that happened to me too, when I went to my first NHL camp, like there was another massive change in the amount of dedication, the, how hard they worked and uh, how much they did off the ice and on the ice, like it, I, I thought in, in yeah. my mind, the perception was, okay, I'm going to be the hardest working. And then you show up and you're like, oh, Ooh. shit, like, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. And But realizing that and then saying like, I, I can be better. I can do more, especially if I want to get to, to that to that position. I, I remember that that happened to me a, a couple of times. And that step from uh, midget AAA to WHL was a huge one. And the step from... The WHL to the NHL was was massive. Too. We used to have to do a six mile run, which is idiotic when you talk about hockey. But that was part of the training program. Well, in Saskatchewan, she's fairly yeah, flat, flat, right? <laughs> so I think I'm doing okay with the six mile run. Yeah, I'm doing it in the allotted time. So we go to training camp and we're go doing it. And we start running and the hill, I'm like, <laughs> I can remember like almost being in tears because I knew damn well I wasn't even close, close to, to where I needed yeah. to be. Yeah. Right? So yeah. there's little things you, you learn. Hey guys, it's Pinder. Let's check in with our Betway bet of the day. Yeah, you know, most of us that watch the show, uh, fans of, you know, the only baseball team in Canada, the Toronto Blue Jays. And uh, I was looking, let's bet on the Jays getting in. No value. But if they are going to get in, who would be falling out? The New York Yankees to miss the playoffs plus 200. Judge a little dinged up. Does he come back soon? Mm, I don't know. Some value there. Plus 200 for the Yankees to miss the playoffs. Houston's in the mix. Seattle's in the mix. The Angels, if they get healthy, they're in the mix. Baltimore and the Rays are already better in the AL East. New York going to miss. Let's make some money. All right, buddies. That's going to do it for part one of our sit down with Robin Regeer. Um, I mentioned off the top the the accomplishments and what he was able to do in his career. And I know we talked kind of a lot about parenting and, and stuff in there. Um, but in part two, which is coming up, it's the you may have you may have heard 
if you if you are of a certain age, uh, Robin Regeer was in a bad car accident when he was a kid, when he was young. And maybe you don't know this, so if you don't, this is going to be uh, it's going to be eye opening for you. It's a a very thoughtful kind of an emotional part two is coming up in our sit down. It's it's that perspective you 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 take things for granted a little bit, and then to hear and see Robin kind of retell the the car wreck in detail is. Uh, it's emotional stuff. I think you're going to like it. That'll join us. Make sure you do join us for part two. That's coming up tomorrow on Barnburner YouTube, on your uh, Google, Apple, or Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Appreciate you. Appreciate all of our sponsors for being a part of what we're doing here. It's a little bit of a different thing in the summertime, but our sponsors on, are on board. We appreciate the sponsors. We appreciate you supporting our sponsors. That's how we get to do this thing. That's how we get to roll this stuff out for you day in and day out. Hope you like it. Have yourself a good one. Part two tomorrow with Robin here on Barnburner. See you, buddies.